And the word of the Lord declares, verse 46, as Jesus was speaking to the crowd, his mother and brothers stood outside asking to speak to him. Someone told Jesus, your mother and your brothers are outside and they want to speak to you. Jesus asked, who is my mother? Who are my brothers? Then he pointed to his disciples and said, look, these are my mother and brothers. Anyone who does the will of my father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. Turn over to Galatians, the sixth chapter, verse number 10. Galatians, the sixth chapter, verse 10. And the word of the Lord reads, As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. You may be seated in the presence of our life-changing king. And what's his name? Jesus is his name. Galatians 6.10 in the New Living's translation says, Therefore, whenever we have the opportunity, we should do good to everyone, especially those in the family of faith. I want to minister to you from this subject entitled, The Importance of of a spiritual family. Good to see you, Mike, back in the house today. Amen. The importance of a spiritual family. That title just gets me excited, just speaking of it, of it, mention it mentioning it in your hearing. You know, for the last 28 years, I have been saved. I spent all of these years physically away from my physical blood family. You know, I am from South Florida myself. Pastor D and I are from South Florida, a little town called Pahokee, Florida, just about 30 minutes inland from West Palm Beach, about 40 minutes from Palm Beach, where the really rich people are. And so I've been away all these years, and of course I've had my immediate family, Pastor D and my kids, and they've been with me everywhere. We've been all throughout the world in the military. But these years, these years, these years that I've been away, um, these have been the years of maturation and these have been the years of my adulthood that I've been away. I left home around 18 years old, to be exact, 17 years old, and got married at 18. And so these years as an adult have been cultivated, um, and these years of maturation have been shaped by people other than my blood family. It has been my spiritual family. The nurture, the counsel, the correcting, the training, the development, and the maturity have come from men and women of God whom I've either followed or served under or served with as co-laborers in the faith. faith. I remember my first experience uh, with people of God. Really, my first real experience is seal what I believe a spiritual family should be. Gave me the importance of a spiritual family. I remember um, in premarital counseling uh, there in Pahokee, Florida, uh, I gave my life to the Lord. My wife was already saved. She had rededicated her life to the Lord while I was in training. And uh, I gave my life to the Lord there in premarital counseling. 
And I can remember uh, going to the church and uh, the whole church celebrating my newfound relationship with the Lord. A few days later, we got married. A few days later after that, I found myself in Texas. When I got to Texas, um, being a newly saved individual, uh, I didn't know how to live saved. I just gotten saved, and now I'm in a new place. And I'm away from my family, even my brand new wife, and my son, who had been born at the time. And I found myself in this new place and trying to learn this new place, learn Army life, and at the same time, learn what it is to be a saved person. And God hooked me up with this guy by the name of Herbert Anthony Milton. Actually, he's a part of our bishop's church in California. You know, it's interesting how that God just hooks things up. But this brother really took me in under his wing. I can remember he told me, he said, you need to get your family here. I had planned on bringing my family after a few months when I saved some money and was able to put a deposit down on a place. But this brother, he took me under his wing and he said, no, we need to get your family here right away because he saw some of the people that I had been in AIT with and training with and he saw how they were pulling on me. He knew that I needed some stability. And so this brother, he took me down and helped me to get uh, this place downtown. He put a deposit down on my 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 apartment. It was a one bedroom apartment that we we had gotten for um, our first apartment. Um, he also took his floor model TV out of his barracks room and he put it in my living room. He took me down to the commissary and he bought groceries and he took me to the PX and he bought shower curtains and he bought all of these things, utensils and knives and forks and all the things you need for a house. The house was furnished so we didn't need furniture, but everything else he either paid for or helped me with, or loaned it to me, he made sure that I was completely prepared for my new family that was on their way. When my family got there, he lived on base, so he told me, he said, I don't need my car during the week. I can walk to work. He says, you can use my car, and he allowed me to use his car during the week. Sometimes I would pass him on the way to work in his car. I would turn around when I saw him to pick him up in his car because he was walking to work. And I was driving. He said he needed his car on the weekend. He said if something come up on the weekend, he says, just let me know and I can bring it back to you. And so he allowed his car, his only car to be my car. And that was our car for maybe about four or five months. And he did this every week. And so I asked him at some point, I said, man, I said, nobody has ever done anything like this for me. What? Make sure you do anything like this. Do these kinds of things for somebody that you barely know. And he shared with me, it was the love of Jesus. And he says, you know, it is a blessing for me to be able to do these things for you. And I realized in that moment it was the love of Jesus and that I had been introduced to the kingdom of God and introduced to a brother in Christ who was a part of my spiritual family. I stayed at that church for maybe about three years. We stayed there for about three years and the pastor was my first pastor. He became a spiritual father. His wife became a godmother to us and their family is it's Glennis, Glennis and Tarnell. That was our first church. That's how we met them. Glennis and Tarnell, y'all saw them here last week. It was the lady that sang on the stage, met her 29 years ago at Bible Way Church of God in Christ. So they're a part of our family. They are a part of our spiritual family. We stayed there for Again, three years, and then we went over to Germany. When we got to Germany, we found a church family there, and they became our spiritual family. We still have a goddaughter from that time, Kishana. Kishana's down in Georgia. She's our goddaughter from that time. You know, I'm good friends with her her dad. And uh, we have so many people that we know and that we become friends with, and more than friends, they become our spiritual family. 
I remember when we were in Germany, you know, sometimes the weather was bad and we were such spiritual family that sometimes we would take covers over to each other's houses and pillows and blankets because sometimes we got snowed in. We would just stay over all night and then we would just fellowship and we would pray and we would break bread together. We would spend time together and fellowship together. It wasn't nothing for us to spend a couple days together and we were always cooking and eating and cooking and eating and playing cards and and, and just doing all kinds of things, fellowship, so much so. But by the time we got to the States, we thought there was something wrong with people in the States because they didn't get together like that in fellowship. We were like, there is something wrong with the church here in America. We were not distracted. We had each other and we became a spiritual family. You know, I, I, we, we left. Uh, uh, Germany and we came here and we connected with Living Waters Christian Fellowship and Apostle Charlie Ammons and Vicki Ammons. They are still my brothers and sisters in Christ. They are my spiritual family. And then we connected with CCI and, and now we have family in CCI. You know, Pastor Carlos Keith, who's been a mentor and a counselor for me over these years, probably 20 something years. I actually met Carlos Keith in Bosnia. Bosnia all those years ago in 1997 and so he's become a spiritual father and a counselor mentor to me Pastor Bob Atkins many of you knew Pastor Bob Pastor Bob Atkins he was a a, a white Caucasian pastor here in the city that took me under his wing took us under his wing and when we didn't have covering for two years and he became a mentor and he covered us and he encouraged us and he built us up and strengthened us and let us know that we had a place in this city and that God hadn't forgotten about us and we were going through a very tough time thinking about quitting ministry and he said no there is something that God wants you to do and that you can do it and so he became a part of my spiritual family no longer here but it's in our hearts forever then we, we have we have Bishop Bishop Jesse Gidden who is now our bishop he is the bishop over Dima and now he's become one that I consider to be a spiritual mentor and a father and a big brother and all kinds of things. He was a brother. Now the role is transition where he's functioning as a spiritual father and mentor. And so we praise God for Bishop Jesse Giddens. He is a spiritual connection that God has given unto us. He's a part of our spiritual family. You know, Bishop Holcomb, the late Bishop Holcomb, spiritual father to us, his words are still found in this church. You hear Bishop Holcomb, Bishop Nathaniel Holcomb, you hear him in the teachings. We have individuals that have come here because of our connection to Bishop Nathaniel Holcomb and Pastor Valerie Holcomb. And they have been paramount again in our lives and they are our spiritual family. Presbyter Hilliard just called me the other day and was talking to Presbyter Hilliard and he said, I saw you on the flyer. He said, man, and my heart just leaped. I'm just so excited excited for you. I just get so excited when I see you guys and they are uncles and cousins. They are all a part of our spiritual family and we place great value on them. Why am I talking about this? Because we need to understand the importance of a spiritual family. You're sitting next to your brother and your sister in Christ. They're not just somebody that you just go to church with. Somebody say, you're my brother. You're my sister. It's important that we understand that we're not just all coming here and we just have an acquaintance. No, the Bible says know them intimately, know them that labor among you. It's important that we know each other and that we have some shared experience and some real deep love and commitment and connection one with another. I don't want to come here every week and see you and not know anything about you and not connect to you because you need a spirit 
spiritual family. I know we understand what a natural family does, and many of us have a lot of relatives, and some are close and some are far off, and we know the importance of a natural family, but do we know the importance of a spiritual family? Because I tell you that even though I, I met Brother Milton all those years ago, I realized that there are some people that connect with you and will do more for you than even your natural blood family will do for you, and so you can't take Take for granted the spiritual connections that God makes in church when we come together. This is what the word of God says in Ephesians, the first chapter, verse number three. It says, all praise to God, the father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who have blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly realms because we are united with Christ. Even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. Verse 5, God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family. See, the thing about it that we have to understand that Jesus Christ, he came to die for us, Mike. But he didn't just come to die for us. He also came to reveal God as a loving, caring, sharing heavenly father. He introduces God to us in a way that he was never introduced before. They saw him as Elohim and El Shaddai and Jehovah Jireh and Jehovah Nisi. But when Jesus came, Jesus says, I do those things that please the father. When you pray, say our father. They had never experienced God in terms a relationship but God wanted to let them know it's not just that I'm God but in the new covenant I'm going to become your father and you're going to be my sons and my daughters and guess what you're going to have brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus when you give your life to him and so the Bible says that God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family we were bastards we were without a father we were in the earth not having a heavenly father and God says when you receive Jesus Christ he says I accept you into the beloved and you become my son and my daughter and Jesus becomes your elder brother how many know that to be the case that God he blesses us and adopts us into his own family this is what Romans verse 16 chapter number 8 verse 16 says it says the spirit itself bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of God and if children then heirs heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ how many know that you're heir of God you got to be in the family to be an heir Ain't nobody just bestowing anything on you if you're not in the family. They're not just throwing, bestowing treasures and giving you uh, these, these in, in, this inheritance without you being in the family. God adopts us into his family and makes us heirs of God. That's why you're royalty. The Bible says that we are a holy nation, a peculiar people. We are God's family. That's why we're holy. That's why we're peculiar, because we're God's family. We're in his family, and God gives us to be heirs and joint heirs with Christ. That means that Christ was the forerunner. He went before us. He is the son of God. He is the firstborn. We're in Christ. Now we are all firstborn. Now we are brothers and sisters in Christ, and God is our father. Jesus is our elder brother and you and I are all hooked up together here in the local church Kingdom Life Christian Church Williamsburg and Petersburg tell your neighbor that you are a part of a family in this church you see you have a natural family and you have natural maturity I grew up in Pahokee Florida yeah 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 yeah, yeah. and I I had a certain level of natural maturity. But when I got saved on that couch by Re Reverend Wallace, when she led me to Christ, I became born again. And so I started over in maturation. I became at that point a part of a spiritual family and I needed to grow spiritually. 
spiritual maturity. The Bible says as newborn babes in Christ, we ought to desire the sincere milk of the word. So when you get born again, you start over. Although you might be 45 or 50, you are a babe in Christ. And it's important that we get the word because we get the word, we begin to mature. And so although you may be mature and naturally, you may not be spiritually mature, but God brings us into a spiritual family that we may spiritually mature and grow up together in him in Christ Jesus. So we're called to be a part of a spiritual family, a community of believers that's receiving the word, that's growing in the things of God and growing up into Jesus Christ, becoming a mature and a perfect man. Am I in the word? And so we have to understand that when we come here, we're not just coming here as a social gathering. We're not just coming here to check our block on Sunday. We're not just coming here because mama said we ought to be in church. We're coming here because we need the word of God. And after a while, as a spiritually mature woman or man of God, you need strong meat. Because why? Because you got some strong issues. Why? Because you got some strong things you need to deal with. Why? Because you got some strong challenges. So you need some strong meat and you need to be mature, but you need to be a part of a house of God that can facilitate that spiritual maturity. Because how many know that life would throw some things at you and childs will come in this life and you need some spiritual maturity. And then you also need some brothers and sisters that are spiritually mature that can help you to navigate the circumstances of this life. Because there will be some things that will come against you. And if you haven't already experienced it, there will be some challenges and some trials and some circumstances and some tribulation that you need some brother or some sister. And also the strength within oneself to be able to stand against the wiles of the devil and all of the tricks and the schemes and the strategies of the devil and the things of this life. Sometimes it's not even the devil. Sometimes it's just trouble in this life. But you're going to need some help. You're going to need some strength. You're going to need some maturity. And you're going to need some brothers and sisters that can get a prayer through, that can help you to be able to navigate some of these circumstances. And Cousin Willie that's sitting on the bucket back home is not going to be able to help you. I know he's your family, but sometimes we need somebody that can tap into heaven and get a prayer through. So you're going to need somebody other than your natural family in this spiritual walk with God. Because sometimes, even though your blood, they're your blood, and I'm not anti-blood, I love my family, but sometimes I can't tell them about my struggles because they don't understand. Why? Because they are not spiritually connected. Why? Because they don't have no spiritual discernment. Why? Because they ain't been in the house of God. Why? Because they haven't been exposed to the things of God, so they have no ability to be able to counsel me in the things of God. So that's why you need a family of like-minded people that can talk to you about some things in a way that you can connect spiritually to be able to handle and to deal with. How many know we are in a secular culture? We are in a sin-sick secular society and is growing increasingly secular. It's beneficial to be in a family of like-minded believers. And you know, there has been an attack on the spiritual family. and Many not seeing the value of even coming to church anymore, you know. You know, by now, these chairs socially distanced should really be full. And I thank God for every person that's here. Let's give God a hand clap of praise for every person that's here. And y'all look good in here today. But everybody wasn't running back to church. Some people are still home on their couch. Well, for what reason? I don't know. And they don't know either. But they're still home. And God bless you if you are home because you have some type of phobia or some type of fear or you have some underlying condition. We're not talking about you. We're just talking about the people who doesn't see the value of going to church anymore. When once upon a time, we couldn't keep you out of the church. But now you don't see the value of church. 
church because why? We can sit home now and watch it on TV or stream it and, you know, I don't have to get up and put on any clothes and put on any makeup and put on any hair. Well, you know, brothers putting on hair too these days. Y'all didn't know. All that stuff ain't real that you see. They got the same thing. I told my wife, I go in in Boulder, I'm going to have a flat top up here. I can't sprinkle but that stuff but so much. After a while, I have to do a keep or go with a flat top. Be like, how you? Well, we don't see the, the need to come to church, and we're fighting. Pastors all over this country are fighting to get people to come back to church. Is it necessary to be in fellowship? Do we need to meet? The answer is yes, yes. Yes, emphatically yes. Yes, we're going to continue to meet online because my mom, mom, you're my family. You know you're my family. I love you. And I love my mother. My mother is watching online now, and she's a part of this church. And she was never a part of our church. She would come and visit, but now she gets to be a part of our church. And so we thank God for the virtual experience. But if you are able to get here, to go back to your church, maybe you're not in this church, maybe you're part of another church and you're watching this via social media, it's time for us to start getting back to church. You go to Walmart and there's a thousand people in there. You got your mask on and they, they ain't even social distance. Some people... Don't give you no space. But I know y'all mad about that, right? Say, give me still COVID, right? <laughs> but they ain't counting the numbers in there. We got you socially distanced, got you going in the same direction. We 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 have you. You sanitize yourself coming in. We got the ushers, you know, making sure that people don't run into each other and all that. And so we're more socially distanced and we're doing more things than they're doing in Walmart. But people don't want to come to church. And really, it's a tool of the enemy to cause people to to think light or little of coming to church. The Bible says in the Bible is still right not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together as some have done for whatever reason. But exhorting one another so much more as we see the day approaching, the day is approaching. So tell your neighbor, it's time for everybody to come on back unless there is a reason. We're glad to be able to come back in the house, socially distanced and all. We're glad I come to church because this is the place where my spiritual family meets. You know, I was talking about just spiritual family, and I was thinking about Elder Carlos and Sherry. Elder Carlos and Sherry have been with us from the very foundation of this church, the planning of this church. They were here before we got new members. They were the members. They are part of the founding partners of this church, and we were out in our driveway just the other night, and, you know, Carlos finally bought a truck. I told every, I'm telling everybody. He, he borrowed, it's the reason I'm saying this, Elder Sherry, because Elder Carlos used to borrow my truck all the time, and then I said over the pulpit, I said, he ain't going to ever borrow, uh, buy a truck because he borrows mine all the time. Well, Elder Carlos finally bought a nice truck, a brand new truck. And so they brought it by for us to see it. And, you know, because, you know, we got these jokes that we be telling on each other. And so, you know, it was an exciting thing. And I was just walking around the truck excited about the truck. And I was just thinking, I said, man, I love these people. 
And I went in the house and I began to just get, get teary eyed. You could ask my wife. I said, man, I love these people. I love these people. I mean, they are no different than my blood family. In fact, we might be closer than some of them. They are my spiritual family. We've laughed together. We've cried together. We've gone through trials together and struggles, hard times, high times, thin times, fat times, lean times. We've been through all kinds of stuff. It's almost been 16 years we've been pastoring. And if you tell if you're spending that much time with people and involved that much and they're not considered your spiritual family, there's something wrong with that. And so I want to bring the value of spiritual family because sometimes we take our brothers and our sisters for granted. And I told them, I said, Every, anybody else can leave, but y'all can't leave. You, you can't leave. <laughs> now, I don't want anybody else to leave. I'm saying I don't want anybody to leave, but they can't leave. They said they can't leave. You can't leave. I question everything we do here. I'd be like, call us a shaman left. My God. <laughs> but all I'm saying is that I love you. I tell people when they come and they become a part of this church, you get in my heart. And I'm very, very serious about this relationship. And I see you as family. You're not just a person that goes to the church, but you're in my heart. I pray for you. I watch for your soul. I mean, you are family. I care about your kids. I care about your health. I care about your well-being. I care about you in every facet. Everything that matters to you matters to me. You bring it to me. It's not just your problem, but we become co-laborers and we're in this thing together. Let's figure this thing out together together it is a part of being a family when you don't allow people to struggle on their own and go about things on their own but you're there with them you it's like your foxhole buddy baby we're in this fight together and too many times we come to the house of God and we just come in and we scatter and we don't connect but it's important that you understand that God's word requires that we connect on a spiritual level I'll show it to you in the Bible can I show it to you in the Bible yes, sir. Yes, sir. let me show you in the Bible in Acts the second chapter because the church at its beginning is the church at its best and so we find in Acts the second chapter turn there turn there verse 42 look at the elements that made this church so close and so powerful. And it's important that we understand that the Bible is right. Amen. I don't care what's going on in the world. We got to stick to the word. Yes, and the word gives us the pattern and the template and everything that we need in order to, 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 to do church, whatever we call church these days, to do church, to have fellowship. The Bible gives us the pattern. The Bible says in Acts 2, verse 42, all the believers devoted themselves. That wasn't casual. To the apostles' teaching. The apostles' teaching is Jesus' teaching. Look at what Jesus taught, and you see what the apostles were teaching. They devoted themselves to that. They devoted themselves to fellowship. That's two fellows in the same ship. The Greek word is called kononia, which means a loving, caring, sharing fellowship. And in sharing meals, they ate together. Sound like that stuff we were doing in Germany and the stuff that we do here. And to prayer. They devoted themselves to this. Look at verse 43. And a deep sense of awe came over them all, and the apostles performed many miracles, signs, and wonders. Verse 44. And all the believers met together in one place. 
they met together in one place. The believers in that particular place, they met together. You know the church spread and they met together. And the church spread and they met together. And shared everything they had. I mean, they were a lot more connected than we are. But it's telling us the necessity of it and giving us the pattern and the template that you ought to be connecting on a greater level. They sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. How many ready to do that? Just go ahead. We're not asking you to do all this, but we're asking you to consider how you can connect more. To consider what your brother may need. You see your brother, your sister in need, and you just forego the need. Don't even try to help. You might can't help everybody, but you can help. You can do something nice for. It's not just you and your foe and. But you got to consider your brother, consider your sister. This is part of being a spiritual family. And I don't care how secular and how worldly this world and how separated this world becomes. In the house of God, we should be closer than the people are in this world. Why? Because we're doing things the Bible way and the Bible tells us that they had all things in common. Turn to Acts the fourth chapter, verse 33. Through 34, and I'm done after this text. Acts 4, verse 33. Let's go to verse 32. Verse 32. And the multitude of them that believe were of one heart and of one soul. There is community there, there is unity there. One heart and one soul. you got to be on one accord to have one heart and one soul. That means you're speaking the same thing, having the same love, having the same faith, having the same earnest care, you know, having similar, similar things that you connect with each other on. Similar things that you talk about, similar things that you share, even similar trials, similar things that's going on in your life. You find some community, you find unity, you find some sense of belonging with your brother, your sister. It says, neither said any of them that all the things which he possessed was his own. They were unselfish. And that's the thing. We got to be less selfish. We got to stop just focusing on ourselves. We got to start focusing on others. What do your brother need? What do your sister need? Emotionally, physically, spiritually. But we are the body of Christ, but we ain't thinking about, oh, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm highly. But we ain't thinking about nobody. You ain't doing nothing for nobody. Nobody in your community, nobody in your family, nobody in your church. You ain't doing nothing for nobody. All Everything you get, get consumed on yourself, that's not the heart of God. But they had all things in common or all things common. Verse 33. The Bible says, and with great power. This here atmosphere that they created facilitated great power because unity in the place of unity there the Lord commands the blessings great power gave the apostle witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ and great grace was upon them all somebody say every last one of them because they were a part of a community great grace was upon all of them so it wasn't just a sprinkle of blessing over here. It was showers all over the place. Because why? They were connected. And that's why you got to watch where you get connected. Because the blessing, that's why we pray even over new partners that this same grace. There is a method to the matter that this same grace. We're saying that you will be covered under this shower of blessings.
Verse 34. And neither were there any among them that lacked. There was no lack. There was no lack. Because there was a community. There was a spiritual family. And why are you going to be lacking when your brother got? Why are you going to be lacking when your sister has? And that's why we got to get free, right? And that's why you can't be in debt, right? Because you, you don't want to be right trying to make ends meet. Because you never get to start thinking about anybody. If you're always trying to make ends meet, it's hard to think about somebody else, Deacon Charles. But I found that true givers, and we're going to talk about this even on Wednesday night. My grandmother didn't even work. But she found a way to give. Because when you truly have a heart to give, it don't even matter what state. You're going to find that you are sharing and you are being a blessing with whatever you have. Because when you have the heart of God, you're going to get that message. Because God, he loves people. And you can't say that you love God and not love people. If you love God, you love people. The Bible says, how can a man say that he loves God whom he's not seen and not love his brother whom he sees every day? The Bible, not Henry Wells, but the Bible says you're a liar. You got a love problem. Spiritual family. God is building something here. And as your shepherd, as your under shepherd, I'm going to make sure that I hear God for you to share with you what you need. And in this season, you need your spiritual family. We've always needed, but we need to echo this sentiment. In God's heart, you need your spiritual family. And it's not something we're making up. He says in the text, and we'll deal with it. Says they called Jesus and they said, Jesus, your brother and your mother, they're outside. And Jesus says, who is my brother and my mother? It's those who are doing the will of my father. They are my brother. In other words, he wasn't saying that that wasn't his mother. He wasn't saying that those were not his brothers. But he was saying that his family had been extended to those who are doing the will of the Father. He pointed to his disciples and said, this, they my brother, they're my mother. It's in the word. In other words, they are part of my spiritual family. There's my little brother. And this is my mother. Father, we thank you.